Hello and welcome everyone to Digitales. My name is Fezan Sayed, founder and CEO of East River, and today I have a serial entrepreneur with me who has found who has been a co-founder of Check-in Solutions and is now the co-founder and CEO of Taze Financial Services. Noreen Hayat, how are you today? Hi, Fezan. Thank you so much. I'm very well. Noreen, you have been an entrepreneur for a while, but you started life as a financial analyst working for PACRA, which is the Pakistan Credit Rating Agency. That's correct. Going from a credit rating agency gig to being an entrepreneur is not a typical path. How did that happen for you? Well, to be honest, you know, I don't know whether entrepreneurship was even something that I was looking into, you know. Right. So this is back in 2011 when I was, you know, an analyst at PACRA. And I was a specialist amongst other sectors for microfinance. Okay. Um, you know, and microfinance really resonated with me as a sector. Um, the, the kind of impact that the sector was bringing in, you know, it was just incredible. Um, and this is, this is back in 2014. Um, and you were doing ratings for microfinance lenders. So yes, microfinance banks and institutions. And that microfinance means lending up, at, up to what level? So microfinance, maybe there are different levels. Banks can, the, you know, requirements thodi bar jati hai. Within institutions, it's a little different. Okay. So for, you know, individuals now, uh, the amounts have increased. Uh, so it's up to anything up to a million rupees. Okay. Um, That's not housing, that small. Yeah. So it, it, like, uh, depends on the kind of loan. So housing finance can go up to a million. Right. But then there's micro enterprise lending, which can also go, if I remember correctly, about one, one and a half million. Okay. So, yeah. That's a reasonable size. Yes. So you're serving small, medium enterprise. So it's primarily serving, uh, well, the base of the pyramid, not necessarily so a very small enterprise. So it serves individuals as well as micro entrepreneurs. OK. Um, and within the regulations also, you know, there's, a, there's a clear bifurcation of what a micro entrepreneur or a poor person is. Now, the, the micro um, finance sector in Pakistan was actually created with the mandate to alleviate poverty. And, you know, you, I'm sure you must have heard of, you know, how microfinance evolved in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And it was primarily that model that came into Pakistan back in the early 2000s. Okay. So it was really helping the poor person get out of poverty. Of course, that wasn't an easy task. And this is all collateral free lending. Well, in some cases, not necessarily. Average loan size to generally microfinance institutions, ka hai, it's, a, it's about 45, 50,000 rupees. That's the average loan size. Okay. Uh, so in some cases, it is collateral fee, but in a lot, a lot of cases, you know, it's either backed by gold or by livestock. So mm -hmm. those are the kind of, you know, collateral that is, these individuals can actually afford. Okay. In some cases, post-dated checks. Right. But unfortunately, you know, the people that the microfinance sector serves, they're people who do not have sortable collaterals, you know. Mm. Um, these are people who do not have access to financial services. Um, and so, you know, this is this kind of sector that we were actually learning to know about so there was actual ground level impact that we saw being made by the sector okay but interesting yes but one thing that we saw at that time the, the sector was criticized for having very high interest rates now you know if you look from uh, you know a holistic point a lot of people won't understand why now you know banks and the wider formal financial sector does not serve the base of the pyramid why because Number one, they don't have data to analyze these customers. Right. Two, you know, these customers don't have suitable collaterals. Right. And three, these institutions don't have suitable risk rating tools to really understand, you know, how to assess them. So these microfinance institutions, actually, they worked a lot, you know, to help them. But problem is that because it was all field level work and, you know, there was a lot of back and forth involved, um, right. it was expensive. And so that the cost of operations had to be passed on to the end consumer. So your cost of basically identifying the target, figuring out whether the target had the suitable means to be able to pay back the loan and then disburse the loan and then do the recovery Absolutely. was very expensive. Yes, it was all field, field work. It was all field work so because they're out, obviously, if they're giving livestock as collateral, then it's your people going gee, out in the field in the rural areas. And mostly these borrowers, you know, so they, let's suppose the borrowers from a rural area. The field offices are the same community ke hote because they understand, you know, that community very right, well. Right, right, so right. So they field to the field, borrower identify, karte you know, they take that data on the paper, bring right. it back to the branch. Branch may work system it delta you know sala data. There's no way to automate this or non there wasn't a way at that time. Well that uh, well that's what we that's where you know we thought of the first uh, So that's company. where the opportunity was. That the, Got it. The, so you saw this as an opportunity when you're a rating analyst yes. and you said, Okay, you know what, maybe we can automate then streamline this process. Correct. And that's what you did with 
check-in solutions. That's correct. Interesting. Yes. And so tell me about check-in solutions. So, you know, um, well, I was very fortunate at that time, you know, my my the co-founder of Check-In, who was also my colleague at that time at Pakra, right. he was also looking into the microfinance sector. Right. So, you know, it was very serendipitous of how those visions aligned. And so we both co-founded Check-In together. And you were both at Pakra together? We both were at Pakra together, yes. Got it. Um, so we said, this is necessary. You know? So it was never about the fact that we had to technology develop or make a company. Hai. The point was there is a need, you know, there is right. a purpose. So why, let's help. You know, so it was always very impact driven. Um, so Hamza and I, you know, that's when the idea came about of check-in okay. and we decided to come up with a digital field application, which uh, automated the entire credit disbursement process. So you saw a back and forth, hota tha, just mein, kai dafa mahina lag jata tha loan dete dete. we, you know, could have brought that process down at that time to two, three days. So the, everything from data collection to assessing the collateral, the, the, assessing the customer, the, yeah. the customer need, everything. Absolutely. And you brought right. that time. What was this be? And so the time that was taking, let's say, the previous microfinance institutions weeks, if not days. That, that's correct. You brought it down to how many days? Two days. Wow, two days. But the well, the catch is we weren't able to really, you know, scale or even launch much with the. Uh, Why is in. that? You ran this for about two years. Yes. So we started check in. So check in gave interesting stories. See. Um, uh, now, check-in, you know, when we decided that we were going to start this, uh, you know, this company, I had my experience in company run and I had my experience in the company. And, you know, we were like, how do we do it? Where did we get a company to start? We had bootstrapped. This was the, you know, I've learned so much. Check-in days actually really taught us how to really, you know, go through the grind. Right. Because we bootstrapped, we were working, you know, through a, a friend's office for a long time. Okay. Uh, you know, interestingly, we, we did, we, now that I look back, you know, I'm, I'm smiling, but it literally right. made me cry at the time. We, right. we hosted a f like a fun fair to, you know, to raise some funds. Uh, so we've done everything. And we did, you know, some sh small consultancies we took. Kuch na kuch revenue aata ra, but we actually were moving on our savings. Okay. Jo thodi baut thi us vakat. Theek hai. Uh, but so yeah. So pure savings dal rahe business banane mein. Aisa hi tha. We took that plunge, you know. Um, but ye time tha ab 2015 ke kareeb jab aa gaya. So 2015, you know, the microfinance institutions, not the banks, but the institutions were not regulated prior to that. What's the difference between so, the institution and the bank? So a bank can take deposits. A bank is regulated by the state bank. Mm hmm Institutions cannot take deposits. So give me an example. What's a microfinance institution today? Uh, for example, Kash. Uh, well, Kash is a bank. Is, well, Kash institution. Yeah, then, uh, you know, Daman is Even Akhuat, for example. So they can give? They can give out loans, but they can't take deposits. But then, where are those loans coming from? Where are they coming from? So, yeah, then they raise from equity, from borrowing, from yeah, borrow yeah. okay. yeah, grants. Okay. Milte, but they no. can only give out the loan. They cannot take deposits. They can't take deposits. Hmm. A microfinance bank, on the other hand, is someone like Tamir Bank, who's now, which right. is now Telenor Bank, or, you know, my, Mobiling Microfinance right. Bank, or Khushali Bank. These banks can actually take deposits. And, you know, deposits are really needed to actually scale the loan book. Right. So yeah, ye, ye primary difference hai. So us waqt jo MFIs the, wo regulated nahi the. They were operating under the Trust Act. Got it. Uh, phir, you know, SECB came in and they, they said, you know, ye is model ko scale karna, it has to be regulated to some extent. Challenges bhi baat se aane shuru the sector mein. So that's when SECB came in 2015 mein, and they regulated the sector. And this is right about the time when we were actually going on with check-in. Okay. So institutions were busy in the transformation process. Mm -hmm. Or technology ke liye budget hi nahi uh, so yeah we that's when you know we got in touch with that uh, with our co-founder Tez Nadeem sahab you know Nadeem Hussain sahab right and you know he just exited Tamir right um, and yeah we just messaged him on LinkedIn saying we need your advice and he replied within 10 minutes wow and then you know that's how the story of Tez started then so he jumped in and check in what happened to check in then so check in you know humne so he met us, you know, we help kare, how do we take this forward? Right. Um, you know, we actually had another partner. Um, we'd actually, so that was also another very interesting story. When we researched our check-in, we developed the MVP. Right. But during those days, we, we came across this company in India. Right. When, which was, which had already developed a DFA, the digital field application, and it had been operational for a couple of years. Okay. And they were working for one of the largest microfinance institutions in India. And this is basically a data collection application out in the field. 
دیئر آر کلیکشن انالیٹکس بھی کرتی ہے تو آل آف دیٹ رائٹ سو اس کمپنی کا نام تھا آر ٹو اس وقت یو نو پالیٹکس تھوڑی بہتر حالات تھے سو یو نو وی دیٹ واز آلسو ویری سر انٹرپریٹرس آف ہاؤ وی گور ان ٹچ ود دیم بٹ وی اسٹارٹ اٹ ورکنگ ود دیم ہم لوگ اتنے We were very euphoric about the purpose, you know, and these guys, we really, really, the purpose has resonated a lot. So right. they've actually done a great job in how they developed the technology, but we knew that hosting in Pakistan was not going to be able to do So of course, there were dynamics of how we had to, you know, manage. Right. But yeah, we talked about Nadeem Sahib, he actually introduced us to the entire sector, you know. Got we it. presented to the All Pakistan Microfinance Board and everyone came, we had a very brilliant idea, we yeah. love it, but... ٹیکنالوجی Right. So that's when he said, you know, تم لوگ دیکھو اس کو سو وی میٹ ایٹ یو نو لاہور میں ایک کارن داج کا پہلا فن ٹیک اسٹاپ چیلنج ہو رہا ہے اینڈ وی یو نو وی وو ون آف دا فائنلسٹ اینڈ وی وو پرزینٹنگ دا اینڈ دین اے فیو ادر آف پلانٹ اینڈ کمپنیز وو پرزینٹنگ پرزینٹنگ دا اینڈ یو نو ہی سیڈ یو نو وین دا ایونٹ اینڈیڈ وی گاٹ دس میسج فرام ہیم سینگ یو نو آئی وو فیلنگ ان مائی بونس وی بی پارٹنرز ون ڈے رائٹ Uh, yeah, that feeling was right. You know? And what, so how is Taze different from check-in? Taze is actually lending? Yes, so Taze, the technology developed, we have our own license. So Taze became the first fintech in Pakistan to get a digital lending license. Okay. Well, not a digital lending, but the first fintech to get a lending license. Because uh, digital lending is a license. Do you anymore. need a license to lend in Pakistan? Yes, we do. We need a license. So SECP gives, if it's only a lending license, But then... But what about all these informal lenders out there that are messaging oh, you on your phone yeah. and, you know, are giving out personal loans at very high interest rates? Yeah. People so are using those, they're right? They're illegal. Um, they're illegal and we've seen, a, you know, like an inflow of lots of them coming in. The SECP is clamping down on them. Right. But then why not have, I mean, if you have a license, you are a lender for small enterprises, micro entrepreneurs, If the awareness was there, wouldn't people automatically come to you? Because this is the safer choice. So with Taze, that's what happened. Taze, when we started, we weren't lending to the SMEs. We weren't lending to the SMEs. Taze was primarily lending to individuals and it included micro-entrepreneurs as well. Right. Um, and these were very small loans. They were $1,000 to $15,000 to $15,000 rupees. And um, we were, so, you know, this is where we brought in the, the innovation. We were actually giving out these loans real time. Okay. And we were analyzing customers based on their smartphone data. You know. What do you mean by uh, analyzing the customer using smartphone data? So your phone, you know, you live yeah. with it practically, yep. right? It, it knows, knows more everything. about you than anyone else. True. You know, probably more than your wife maybe. Even. But then you're asking the person to give access into the smartphone yeah. data. And if they comply, then you're able to... Yeah. So the customer... gave us consent into to read to, you know to read into the smartphone data right our so we had developed credit scoring algorithm algorithms so those algorithms Got read it. the data and they assigned credit scores based on you know whatever that data was right and then we lent based on you know that the scores and you mentioned earlier that you know some people were lending at very high interest rates how was your interest rate pricing set when you were giving out these these loans so, so i'll tell you how the costing is so unit unit economics jo hai na Initially, nano lenders, the, the major element of cost is that of defaults. So you've got, you know, the cost of defaults, you've got the cost of operations, you've got the cost of acquisition, and then there's a margin. Default initial years when nano lenders get higher. Uh, then, of course, there's a cost of funding as well. Uh, so we were charging, it was this, these are mostly monthly loans. Um, and this varied anywhere between 3% to 20% depending on the risk profile of the customer. Okay. So it was risk-based pricing. So that's, you know, that's how we were managing it. So you, this is interesting. You've actually broken the, the, the cost of a loan, the cost of default, the cost of operating the business to provide the loan, 
the cost of acquiring the customer the cost of the capital itself whether it's through equity or debt yeah. and then eventually the the margin, the margin that the business needs to earn absolutely of these five which allocation which which component is the highest cost so initially yes it's a default if you can manage the default that's that's where the cost know, of default is higher than the cost of capital so see cost of capital jo hai that's spread over a year these nano loans are monthly loans so right. let's suppose agar aaj you know 17 percent be interest rate so that's about 1.5 percent on a monthly basis right. right but the cost of default is also on a monthly basis that's right. not on an annual basis then. right so you know well this is also an interesting story when we started lending yeah we went in blind the first cohort we went in without credit scoring we went in without any business rules right and you know the kind of fraud that we confronted it was it actually literally shook us because you know our defaults were not a 50% percent. 50% percent plus default rate the pehla cohort tha we were like yeah you know and what, what was the loan size average loan size so we started off 1000 rupees se jab so this grew up to uh, about 1800 2000 rupees ka average loan mm. size tha so we were like yaar ye business pata nahi hum investors ke paise ke sath kar kya rahe hain this is you know we we actually really you know got very skeptical of how you're going to take this business forward right but that le- that learning was actually gold for us that's where we started building our fraud engines our credit scoring our business rules and karte karte hum 50% se 40% pe laaye 30% pe laaye 20% pe laaye 15% pe laaye 10% pe laaye and then the journey from 10 and you know below went so what then, is it at today well when tez got acquired uh we closed up last cohort at under 3% under 3% so how long kitna time laga is ko under 3% lane mein so 15% tak aa chuka tha i think within a year and a half okay uh but then you know this yeah that the last real, leg is that was a tougher one because isme sirf see lending at scale is very tricky it's an art and a science hmm. because isme algorithm to important hai business Actually, disbursement was, was through an app yes so we had an app it was completely digital so completely work. digital it's online dis- uh, it's disbursed through an app so linked wallets to your account wallets mein wallets mein okay theek hai so kahin bhi pakistan mein aap easy paisa jaaz kahin bhi aap jaake paise nikal sakte then majority times cash out hi hota tha theek hai so yeah we then um, yeah that's how it was and um, and then managing that cost of default down from 15 to 3 yeah. what do you think was the key component that brought it down a lot went into that it wasn't only the credit scoring piece we we did work a lot on the credit scoring piece you know we had teams you know working from dc and china to help us you know strengthen the algorithm right but saath saath i think jo main difference hua um, that was how we were looking at the customer journey okay and that's very instrumental i think it's, it's walk me through what the customer journey so needed to be i'll tell you a customer journey mein a product of course matter karta hai but how the customer engages with the app uska experience kaisa tha you know while repayment uska experience kaisa tha even after repayment you know so wo sara process bada zaruri hai i'll give you an example hmm. so let's suppose agar repayment ke waqt um koi problem aa gaya wo repayment nahi kar sakta aapke through कोई भी रीज़न हमारा लिंक डाउन है इजी पैसा का लिंक डाउन है वट एवर दैट रीज़न वॉज कस्टमर कोशिश कर रहा है रीपे करने के लिए यू नो द सम इज शू दैट दैट्स नॉट हिज अर फॉल्ट ही बी लाइक यू नो द कस्टमर गोज रोग सी इज एम नॉट गोन रीपे यू नो सो थिंग्स लाइक दैट तो अगर कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस में कोई भी हिंड्रेंस आए तो कस्टमर विल नॉट पे बैक If customer experience may be a hindrance, a customer may not pay back. May chances not. are the there chances not. increase. Yeah, the so chances th- increase. And also, customer support is very necessary. So you know, on each and every screen of the app, we had a call to action. Right. You know, to the customer support, whether it was a call or a message. Right. So our, cust- our customer support was literally like the field staff. They were the foot soldiers for us. You know, so the, we did a lot of training of the customer support team. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think a lot of things played their role. and of course acquisition was all, was equally important kyunki agar aap ek customer base la rahe hain jo actually default hi karegi to aapki acquisition fail kar gayi ye ye customer milta kahan hai how did you acquire this customer where did you find so this customer so it was all digital marketing um you know this is where someone like you yeah. can come into play so we, we no, i'm curious how did you find them what, what were these well, customers doing on digital that you were able to so intercept it, their experience and say here come take a loan so our marketing manager jamal you know he can answer that right. very well in fact you know he, you should meet him uh isme so, you know so we had google adwords uh, facebook sms marketing thi but of course we created personas right. um and jo personas jo acche customers ke personas of course then we started 
rep, rep, mimicking them when we were right. doing our marketing. Right. Uh, Did influencers work? Did you ever try influencer marketing with us? Well, I, I think our budgets were very restricted. Our focus was more on the fact that the money was going to the loan book. But yeah, influencers are something that now we'll be engaging with Zoot, you know. Um, right. I think on the e-commerce side, that's something that would probably sell very well. So you then got into so your credit rating experience jumped into check-in solutions got into uh, collecting data on customers then pivoted because that didn't take off the way you thought it would and pivoted found a co-founder partner in Nadeem Hussain who helped you move and branch into Tez Financial correct and now you've been acquired that's correct tell me about that part of the journey <laughs> like we've been very fortunate you know sometimes i think about it very fortunate right um uh, this acquisition actually happened right When? before the recession like last year we announced it in may oh it was last year 2022 yes may 2022 okay um and was this was right before the the war the ukraine russia war happened okay. and the markets closed only shuru hui right it was such a short window you know so I, that's when the the acquisition actually happened but why did you look to get acquired i mean zaruri kya tha I mean, you're doing well the product or ye app iska kafi take off kar gaya tha you managed your loan book your defaults are down so at this point bechne ka fayda yeah so i think that the truth of the matter is ke fundraising wasn't easy um and this we we well survived a pandemic कोविड के टाइम से मुश्किल होना शुरू हो गया था फंड रेजिंग कोविड के टाइम पे एक्चुअली जो नई कंपनीज आई यू नो फॉर देम इट वाज इजियर टू रेज फ्रेश फंडिंग एज अपोज टू कंपनीज दैट वर इन ऑपरेशन दैटिंग दर्निंग हार्ड वे नाउ बट एट दैट टाइम आई थिंक होप्स वेरी हाई ऑन हाइपर ग्रोथ एंड नाउ दैट यू नो दिस um i think it panned out very well for us um because i think tez was at an inflection point where someone like zoot could have actually and is now helping to you know um evolve to segments that we at the time couldn't have and okay. because i think they actually brought in of course fundraising was one part of it right but also now the other interesting piece is how e-commerce is evolving we've seen you know the growth of the e-commerce sector 80% year on year it's been insane and so what zoot does and you know when these we were talking to them zoot has had initially started off more so e-commerce focused they you know ventured into bnp later on and from being an e-commerce platform that, that did lending you know over the years they become a digital lending platform for e-commerce so mm-hmm. there's been quite an quite a smooth but interesting shift What is BNPL? Let's for our viewers yeah. explain what BNPL is. So BNPL is buy now, pay later. Okay. It means that you know you can you know probably buy this glass. Yeah. Now you don't have the cash for it. Um, you can pay for it over the next three months, and so it's financing. Bit, it is financing. It's small finance. It's consumer loans. It's consumer loans. Yes. And basically, this is offered by the platform. जहाँ से हम चीज़ खरीद रहे हैं या is it offered directly to the consumer? How does it work? So Zood has its own marketplace which is called Zood Mall. Um we've launched just launched in Pakistan so that's available. So it's a brand new marketplace I can buy anything from it. So it's well not it's globally it's not brand new. Okay. We uh, globally operate in five other countries and we have 10 million users globally. Wow, okay. So Pakistan we've just launched and you know we're in the process of more, we have a lot of online um a lot of cross border uh, international sellers right and now you know more and more local sellers are getting on board on, on the platform in pakistan got it so bnpl is something that's available on zood mall okay. but it's also available on other websites at checkout so that's something that we're working towards and launching soon so as a, for example i want to go buy a kurta from a site yeah i can order the kurta it'll be delivered to me but yes. i have to pay let's say a fraction every Uh, every month every month yeah that's how it is so this is a new service offered in pakistan is anyone else offering it so you know prior to us uh, you know a few entities started it kispe being one of them kalpe okay. these are you know different entities who worked uh, kispe isn't doing it anymore they are why few, didn't it work for I, them i think um, i think maybe they were targeting growth too fast and they couldn't manage it. they couldn't keep pace with the defaults that they you know with the kind of pace that they were targeting mm, so there's a default issue in this also it is absolutely while this is product backed you know you still have to be very smart about what product you're lending against right and what kind of consumer you're lending to you know so again credit scoring plays its role over here as well uh it's 
well, it's almost the same as, you know, giving out nano loans, just that it's not cash upfront. So you, because you've had the experience, I mean, you've worked on this before, you brought your default rate from 50 to, let's say, 3%. Yes. For that reason, you think that buy now, pay later, pay, you will do better than everyone else? Well, not only. Uh, there are some different reasons. Our buy now, pay later model, it's not exactly like a lot of other BNPL players are operating. So we do initial, in, you know, initial years or initial cycles, we do not provide BNPL on what we call 3C products. You know, consumer electronics, computers, um, cell phones. So there's because none on that? Well, Why there is not, not for short. So we call BNPL for ex for installments. Okay. We and this is where consume the consumer does not pay anything. It's zero percent for their consumer. So we charge. You know, we earn from the merchant. But then mm. where where we venture into that model where we start. On the transgender front, so you're saying that uh, BNPL electronics pay mobiles pay still offer ho sakta because margins come in pay. So. Not necessarily, margins sort of is, is not the only issue. The right. issue is that these products are risky products. Jaha, the element of fraud is very high on them. The element of, jaha bhi resellability high ho jati hai, element of fraud bar jata hai wahan. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why we are very cautious about hmm. how we're doing it. So, kurte aap resell nahi kar sakte, jute so, chances are chances low. Chances come with it. But aisi baat nahi kam BNPL karte nahi hai iske upar. So, Forex pe we don't provide BNPL, but this is where the consumer uh, so, on, you know, Forex, consumer doesn't have to pay anything. It's zero percent for the mm. consumer. It's the SME that we, you know, that we charge a commission from. In case of longer term products, you know, longer term, uh, you know, four, 6X or 12X, we do give out consumer loans for the 3C products as well. But in that case, the consumer then also has to bear, you know, some cost. So okay. that, you know, our, you know, our risk goes down. So that's how we manage that end. But we don't give our three C's, you know, on day one. We have to look into how the consumer's credit score also is operating. Right. You have spent a lot of time. I mean, it sounds like you're in the financing business and you're giving out loans, right? But as I'm hearing it, you're in the business of human psychology. You are in the business of understanding the average Pakistani and how they live their life. And where financing or small micro loans can help them improve their life. If I was to look at it that way, define the average Pakistani. Oh my God, that's tough. These days even tougher. Well, that's really tough, actually, you know. Um, like what have you seen based on all of the data, the average person you're lending to, what is their life like? It's, it's not very difficult, really, to understand how humans operate because we are, you know, one ourselves. Right. Um, okay, I've actually so one thing that we, fo we, we talk about a lot is high tech to hai, but Balance it with high touch. Or what is it? You you know, you think about yourself in that situation. Or you, you know, you think about someone you know in that situation. It actually makes you when you start personifying a situation, it makes things much easier. Interesting. And in this journey, I mean you talked about, you know, sort of building up through two startups, reaching the point of acquisition, and now the acquirer scaling into Pakistan. Along the way, you know, you were a woman entrepreneur in typically a sector that is dominated by men. Was that ever a challenge for you? Yes, you see, um, I think different ways definitely it was a challenge. Um, and Give me one time when it was the most challenging. And I ek dafa nahi hua, kuch dafa hua ye. Right. See, I think I was very fortunate because of my co-founders who really supported me. You know, bahut matter karti hai wo cheez. But I think... A woman, no matter what one says, one, a woman has to work harder to prove herself. In all uh, sectors? It's not necessarily in all sectors. Maybe not, but definitely, you know, in the financial services space, yes. Right. Because it's been a male-dominated, you know, uh, industry. Right. And, you know, Pakistan itself, is a, it's a very patriarchal uh, country, society. society, you know. So it's, um, that's... Um, How did you win acceptance? I think I worked very hard, you know, it showed, I hope it showed in the work that I did. Well, you know, um, I definitely had to work harder to show um, that I knew things, you know, to people, even at times to my co-founders, you know, 
because that's you don't co-founders you have to well at least you know what I hear you know because you need to prove a point and you can only make a point if you know better than someone else in the room well I wouldn't say I know better than maybe Nadeem Saab but some cases yeah you know there's some areas that we learn from each other right right and primarily the external market you know I think um used to happen my team ke sabhi shuru shuru mein you know Hamza and I used to be sitting and we used to be talking about the same thing right and you know he was acknowledged for what we both were saying and but I was very vocal you know I was like excuse me you know um, right. so I had to put my foot down at least in my team everyone knows that you need to respect everyone for the work that they're doing irrespective of their gender so I was very vocal but that being vocal can't work everywhere you know um, you can't uh, you need to show it with with being the smarter voice in the room and so that yeah. that takes a lot of time because you have to invest a lot of time learning and and proving yourself it can be very exhausting yeah mujhe kai dafa ye question you know why is this even a question at the end of the day you know yeah. that you know you're a woman how is it any different it's it's unfortunate that this is even a question yeah it shouldn't be but it does come up and yeah. because and it it is a deterrent also for startup entrepreneurs right who are looking to venture into a space that may not be a space dominated by women and you know you see it in numbers that unfortunately women founders have not been able to raise the kind of funding that male founders have right. whether it's in terms of ticket sizes or overall you know caps that they've raised uh, but yeah i think um, we have some amazing women founders that are coming into different industries and it's really heartening to see maine jab shuru kiya tha mujhe yaad hai conferences mein aurte nahi hoti thi you know i it used to be very well make uncomfortable to kabhi nahi hoti thi but it was sad right अब वो पैन वो मैनल्स होते थे अब आस्ते आस्ते तक अच्छी चीज़ें हैं दैट यू सी मोर एंड मोर वेमेन यू नो वॉइस इज बींग हर्ड अनफॉर्चुनेटली मुझे लगता है बहुत सारी जो कंपनीज और यू नो दीज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आर वर्किंग टू वर्ड एंड यू नो प्लीज पार्ट माई ब्लॉन्टनेस बट आई थिंक इट्स इट्स लॉर्ड इट्स अ फसाड यू नो वाई डू फील इट्स अ फसाड बिकॉज इट्स जस्ट समथिंग दैट इज अ वर्ड ओवर यूज आई थिंक बिकॉज इट हेल्प मेक दैम लुक बेटर Right. Get funding maybe in some cases. Right. हर मैं ये नहीं कह रही हर कोई ऐसा है. Right. But I do see you know different fragments where this term is misused. Interesting. How do you get past it? So that's a tough one because मुझे I think it has to be a balance. Right. Uh, you have to make men your allies. You know, you, one can't do it alone. It's and it's not going to be a short term. Um, uh, you know, transition. It's going to there's going to be a lot involved. Is it different in different parts of Pakistan? Maybe rural. I don't actually. No, I mean urban. I'm just talking about KLA. Ah, uh, because you've grown up in, from you grew up in Islamabad. Yes. You've spent time in Lahore, and now you're in Karachi. Do you think it's different in different cities? Because this is a question that comes up very, a lot. Yeah, this is also very interesting. Maybe I. We don't even know this self-imposed. Right. Uh, but you know, I think um, it's a lot about priorities as well. Karachi, me definitely you see a lot of professionalism, and you see a. you know a lot of women wanting to do things but then again ab islam mein bhi wo nazar aata hai you're a woman and you could start any entrepreneurial business you're starting a business which city would you start it could that be also any depends business. on what i want to do fashion okay. retail lahore bake up beauty lahore food and beverage Ma- karachi <laughs> <laughs> so there are so you would still yeah. pick you would pick the city based on the sector i i think so but again you know up up because her cheez itni digital ho gayi hai there's so many you know things that एलिमेंट दैट प्ले इन टू इट राइट यू नो अब मार्केट तो कहीं भी सर्व कर सकते हैं यहाँ बैठे हुए हम लोगों के कस्टमर्स यू नो वी हैव ऑल ओवर पाकिस्तान माई लास्ट क्वेश्चन टू यू इफ यू डू इट ऑल ओर गैन अप ऑन टू दिस पॉइंट राइट ना वट इज वन थिंग यू डू डिफरेंटली आई एक्चुअली द वे आई डिड इट ओके एंड इट्स वर्क आउट परफेक्टली सो फॉर बेस्ट ऑफ लक विद जूड एंड जूड मॉल Thank you so much for that. It's been so fun talking to you. Thank you for taking the time out. It's been a pleasure getting to know you and the work you've done. And thank you all for tuning in. Stay tuned for more details. Subscribe below by clicking the uh, clicking the button. Thank you. My first question to you is there eleven herbs and spices? Can you tell me what they are? And no, but I can tell you what the 12th is and that is our people. Our transgender, transgender is born with both organs. Uh if I'm a girl and I cover my head and I'm sitting with a trans girl, do I have to still cover my head? IB or lumps? IB. Foreign grad or a local grad? Local grad.